Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at configuring extended IP version 4 access control list. We'll be discussing extended access control list, numbered and named extended IP version 4 access control list syntax, protocol and port numbered configuration, how to apply numbered and named extended IP version 4 access control list, TCP established extended access control list, how to edit extended access control list, and finally, how to verify those extended access control list. This episode is part of my series on enterprise networking, security, and automation. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. Access control lists allow you a greater degree of flexibility of control of your of what you're allowing or not allowing through your network than a standard ACL. Now, a standard ACL only looked at the source IP address. It only looked at that. It only looked at the source IP address. What an extended one does is it looks at the source address, the source IP address, but it also can look at the destination address. It can look at the protocol, meaning it can look at IP, TCP, UDP, ICMP. It can look at the protocols and it can also look at the port number, the layer four port number that comes along with it. An extended ACL can be either created as a numbered one, so we can give it a number, or it can be created as a name. Now, once again, the numbers for an extended ACL go from 100 to 199 and 2000 to 2699. It can be any one of those numbers. Typically, we try to keep it in the 100 to 199. If you have a lot of ACLs in your organization, then you can go up to and use that second range. But most of the time, we keep them in the 100 to 199 range. Let's see the different protocols that an extended ACL can analyze. You can go ahead and type in from global configuration mode, access list. This is just like you're creating a normal access list. Put in a number, you gotta make sure it's in an extended in, in the extended range, 100 to 199 or 2000 to 2699 then permit or deny, and then you can put a space question mark. And it will list out all the protocols that this extended ACL can filter on, it can look at. We can see in here, it has a whole bunch of them. We have ICMP, we have IP, we have TCP, we have UDP, those are the common ones. But we can get into stuff like looking at OSPF, the routing protocol. We can get in and filter deny based upon that type of traffic going across there. And so there's a whole lot of information that we can get in there, very granular on controlling it. So these are the protocols. Then once we've identified the protocol, we can list out the ports. This command right here, starting off by creating, just say we're going to create that access list again. So we start off with access list. Give it a number here for an access list, 1 to 199. 2000 to 2699 permit then we're going to say tcp so we've picked out our protocol and then we're just going to quickly put any any in there for our ip addresses our source and destination equal to and then we put a question mark when we put that question mark it's going to list out all the ports that we can filter on based on tcp and here's the list of all the ports we can looking through here we can see we have something using a border gateway protocol that's a routing protocol typically used on your edge devices and isps but then we can come down here we can look at our domain name services we can look at ftp we can look at pop and smtp different mail protocols we can look at telnet and way at the bottom of the list we can look at www as part of what we are doing here these are named shortcuts. You can filter on any port you want, any layer four port number. 
from one to 65,000. You could put any number in there. For the commonly known ones, like for FTP, that's on port 21, you could use the name. Right here, it'll say FTP, file transfer protocol, and then I'll say what port is there. So you could either put in 21 or you could put in FTP here where the question mark is. You could put either one. These are the list of the commonly known commonly known layer four port numbers. Configuration example here, going through setting this up. We're gonna set up an access list, an extended one of 100. We're starting off in global configuration mode. So we start off with access list, then we put in our number. Once again, our extended numbers go from 100 to 199. So we chose 100 there. Then we have our keywords there of permit, deny, or is this a remark statement? Then we look at the protocols. Then what are we filtering? Source and destination. And then equal to what port number of the protocol. And so here we're gonna filter, we're gonna permit any web traffic through there. You could type in that command or you could type in the second command. It's all the same all the way up until the end where Instead of putting www for web traffic, we put port 80 in there. You could put port 80. That is your unencrypted web traffic. Continuing through here, we have another example where we're allowing something on port 22. Port 22 is part of how FTP works. Another access control entry we're entering in is we're we're allowing port 44 or 443 43 through but that what is that the secure web traffic now there isn't something for there isn't a commonly known name for web traffic it's not sww or it's not https there is no common name that we can put in there so you do have to put 443 if you're going to allow secure web traffic through if you're going to allow normal web traffic you could do one or the other you could do www or port 80. now to apply that numbered extended ip version 4 access list first thing you have to do is make sure you create it here we have two statements that create access list 110 we have a permit from the 192.168.10.0 network with a wildcard of 00255, anything matching our web traffic or port 80. Then we have another permit statement here from that same network where we're gonna allow secure web traffic. So HTTPS traffic through there. We have two permits. We've created our access list. Now what we have to do is apply it to an interface. Go into the interface. For this example, we're gonna go into interface gig 000. On that interface, then we can say, okay, IP, part of the IP suite here, we're gonna say what group of access control entries, so it's access dash group, then we give it the number because we created that numbered extended access control list of 110. Where do we get 110? That's the value we entered right there when we created our access control entries and our access control list. And then what direction? We're gonna apply it to all inbound traffic here on our gig 000 network. To create an ACL, let's work through an example. Here we have a simple network. We have basically two networks. We have the inside of your company here that's represented on the left side in the blue. Then on the right side, we have the internet, the wild, wild west. What we want to allow here is any request from inside the network, from PC1, allow any request to go out to the internet, make a request and get a response back. So PC1 is gonna request a web page. It's gonna go out through the router, go across the internet to the web server, and we're gonna wait for a response and allow that response to come through our router to be delivered to PC1. But we also need to stop any other traffic from the internet coming in. We'll allow the responses to come in. So those responses, they can come in, but any other traffic we're not waiting for, we're going to stop. So any other traffic, we're gonna stop and, and block that from coming into our, into our network. And down here is a couple of arrows that show us what we're looking at. 
And so TCP request from PC1 to the outside public network is permitted. So we're going to allow that to go. And then we're also going to reply, allow that TCP reply traffic from the outside network to come back in for the PC. So we're going to allow this connection here. to go through but then we're also going to block any other any other attempts to get onto our network to create our acl we start in global configuration mode we start off with access list and then we give it our new number previously we used 110 we're going to create a new list for 120 here and what we're going to do is we're going to permit tcp traffic and looking at this relation here relationship down here that we're going to request from the inside of our network TCP information from the outside world, and then we're going to wait for the response. What we're going to do is set up an access control entry that allows a response from anybody on the internet to come through our router to go to our network of 192.168.10.0, but only used as established connections and that's a new keyword here and so what we're going to do here is we're going to create this access control entry here with a source of any and that's what this first part here is this source of any is is two quad zeros meaning the network portion is all zeros the wildcard is all zeros meaning any address and, and we're going to filter the traffic coming in so any address from the internet and so this is the source on the internet here It's going to allow any any information to come in our network and it's going to be destined for this and this is the destination which is our internal network and so it needs to be destined for the internal network if we had other networks there we it wouldn't match this statement but if it's destined for our internal network we're going to allow it through but then we're going to use established connections now the established connections is a special keyword at the end. What this established connections does is it enables inside traffic to exit out of our network, in, exit our inside private network, and then permits that returning traffic to come through. So the traffic needed to start with a request from the inside and so that's part of that TCP request and reply pattern here. And so there had to be a request. And if there was a request, we're going to allow it to go through, come back through on this established connection, only allowing established connections to connect through. And so our, our command here is access list 120, our new number. We're going to permit TCP traffic from anything out there on the internet destined to our internal private IP address of 192.168.10.0 network for any established connections, any connections that started the process on the inside of our network that made a request now that we're waiting for a reply. And what we're gonna do here is once we have this command set, and once again, we did it, we have one permit statement and then there's the implicit deny. If we don't match that first access control entry and then the only one in there, we're gonna deny it. We're gonna go in and apply it to the interface here that is connected to our internal network. That, that would be this interface right here. And so we're gonna apply it here to outbound traffic. We're gonna do the filtering on outbound traffic. Draw the cute little symbol for a filter. And we're gonna filter that traffic. And so we go into our interface here of gig 000, and then we're gonna say IP access group, what group of access control entries. We're gonna do 120, because that's the one we just created there. And we're gonna apply it to our outbound traffic. So any traffic going out that gig 00 interface, we're gonna filter. And it needs to meet the, these requirements that it could be anywhere from the, uh, the internet destined to the network that's connected to our gig 000 interface, but it has to be an established connection, meaning we needed to request that, that we needed to request TCP information and we're going to allow this reply to come back through. So we go ahead, 
apply that to our interface, IP access 120 out. We can end it and now let's do a, the show access list. We do the show access list. Here it's gonna list out our access control list. Here's access control list number 110, our extended one, where we permitted web and secure traffic. We can see that we've had 657 matches. Down here is the new access control list we entered. It has a sequence number of 10. We're permitting this traffic. And as you can see, this, this access control list has been running for a while because we have over 1,100 matches already for it. We've, we've had 1,100 requests go out and replies come back in. So we're counting the number of established replies that have came back into our system. To create a named extended IP version for access control list, we use the command here from global configuration, IP access list, and then we want to say extended. You can either enter extended or standard here. Here we're going to create an extended one and then give it a name. Here's an example. So from global configuration mode, we entered an IP access list. We're doing an extended list and we entered in this name, no-ftp-access. We entered that in, we kept it all caps. The only reason we kept it in all capital letters is it helps us identify when we sort through all of the information, that name will stand out. That's the only reason it's in all caps, but it is case sensitive. So if you do that, every time you type it in, you need to make sure you match that case. Once we type that in, notice how our prompt has changed. Now we went from global configuration mode. Now we're extending, or now we're configuring an extended AC, an extended named access control list. So that's extended dash named access control list. That's what we are now configuring. Here's an example of creating a named extended IP version for access control list. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create two extended ACLs. One ACL is going to permit HTTP and HTTPS traffic to exit to the internet. So this surfing one here is going to allow HTTP and HTTPS to leave our network. So that's the surfing one. And then browsing, we're only going to permit web traffic coming in that was from an established connection. And once again, the established connection is where there's been a request that went out, a TCP request that went out, and we're waiting for that TCP reply to come in. That's the only TCP traffic we're going to allow through the device is through this established connection. Okay, now to create our surfing named access control list, our extended one, we go up here from global configuration mode. We type in IP access extended because we're creating that. Otherwise it'd be standard. And then we put in the name here. We're going to go ahead and put surfing in. Once again, it's all caps, makes it a little bit easier to identify. Then our prompt changes telling us we are doing an extended named access control list. We go ahead and put a remark in here to remind us later on on what we're doing. And then we have our permit statements. Because we want to allow both HTTP and HTTPS, we have to enter those in as two separate statements. And so we do a permit from, and so this is the from portion right here. So that is from, or the source. So from our internal network of 192.168.10.0 network, we're going to allow it to go to any address. And so that's the destination. So it's going to go to any address out there on the internet. Any is equivalent to two quad zeros. So the network is all zeros. The wildcard is all zeros. We're not going, we're, we're not going to care. We're not going to match anything there. We're just going to take all of that and allow it to go out. As long as it is in and equal to our layer four port number of port 80 which is our HTTP traffic. We could go in here and put www as a keyword instead of 80. You can do that either way. Then the next statement, we have to go ahead and allow our HTTP 
S traffic. Well, HTTPS. So we got permit once again from our network to any place on the internet to layer four port number four four three. Once again, is our HTTPS port number. And so we're going to allow that to go out of our device. We're not going to let anything else go out, but those two requests. So those two requests can go out, they can hit their web server, and then we're going to wait for that reply coming back in. And then we're going to create a second named extended IP version 4 access control list. Once you've created that first one, you go ahead and type exit, brings you out the global configuration mode, then from global configuration mode, we put in IP access list extended, just like we did for the first one, but now we give it a different name. And now this is the browsing list. And so this is, if we look at the drawing down here, this is only to allow those established connections to come back in to our network. And so we put in our remark statement, only allow returning HTTP and HTTPS traffic. And then we have our permit statement. And so we're gonna permit any TCP traffic. And then we start with the source here. So from anywhere, we don't care where. So anywhere on the internet, as long as it's destined for our internal network, and once again, this is our destination address, their destination address, and as long as it was an established connection, as long as it's, this is an, a TCP reply to an existing TCP request, we're gonna permit it through. If it doesn't match this one, it's gonna to go to the implicit deny, and then it's gonna get rejected and not allowed onto our network. Once we've created both of our access control lists, we go into the interface here. We're gonna apply it to our gig zero zero interface. That's the interface right here on our local area network. So that's our local area network. Once we're in there, then we can go ahead and apply those access control lists to that interface. Now one is going to be applied to the traffic coming into that interface, into the router, and then the other one is gonna be applied to the outgoing traffic, the, out, the traffic going out of that router, out of that interface. And so the surfing one, if we look down here, is applied to traffic coming in. And once we're in our configuration of our interface, we're IP and then access group, which group of access control entries are we gonna use? We're gonna use the one named surfing that was the first one we're gonna do, and we're gonna apply it to our traffic coming in, coming into that interface, coming into the router. Then we have to apply that second access control list. We go ahead and enter an IP access group again, put our name of our second access control list, which is called browsing, and then are we applying it to the in or out traffic? If you like this episode on configuring extended IP version for access controls and you get value out of it, and depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment. Doing this supports the channel, which in turn helps me bring you more great content. You can also visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. Our requirement said we're going to apply it to outbound traffic, going out of that interface, going out of our router. So we're going to apply it in the out direction. So browsing gets applied in the out direction. Here we can go ahead and type end. We can do a show access list, and it's going to list both of our, ex our, our named extended IP version 4 access control list. Here's the first one. Here we have surfing. Here's the second one. We have browsing and notice how the capital letters helped it stand out. And so for surfing, it only lists the non remark access control entry. So our first one based off of our sequence number here is to permit traffic from the 192.168.10.0 network, our internal private network going anywhere on the internet. And so that's what the any is equal to our port 80 or equal to www. And notice it did make that translation up on top. We typed in port 80, type port 80, but down here it translated it to a commonly known name, www. 
And then the second entry here is we're going to permit from our internal network again anything that matches 443. Once again, this was our HTTPS traffic, our secure web traffic. So that's our first access control list called surfing. Our second extended access control list is browsing. And we're going to permit from anywhere. So it's the source address. We don't care where it's coming from on the internet. As long as it's destined for our internal private network, so that's the destination, and it's the established connection. We are waiting for that TCP reply from a TCP request we sent out. To edit an extended access control list, we use our sequence numbers again. Here we can do a show access list and it's going to show us the access list we just created. We created the browsing one, we created the surfing one. And as we look at them, all of a sudden we noticed we did we have a typo. Right down here, instead of 192, we typed in 119. So this should be 192. What we need to do is go in and change this. Now, in order to change this, what you have to do is delete it and then recreate it. In this middle example here, we can see we go into global configuration mode. Then we go into the access list itself. We start off from global configuration mode. We type in IP access list. We need to tell it it's either extended or standard. For us, it's an extended. And then we give it the name of our list and we give it surfing. We know that we want to remove sequence number 10. What we do is we type in no and then a 10. We don't have to type in anything else after that. We just know we want to remove sequence 10. Now we can go ahead and enter in the new sequence 10 number. Here we can go ahead and type in 10 and then permit TCP. Make sure we type in 192 correctly this time and then we can fill in the rest of the information just like we had it. Once we type that in, we can hit enter. You can exit out. Now to verify it again, we can go ahead and type our show access list here going to list out our access control list and once again we are working on the surfing one see how the capital letters help identify our access control list for easily viewing and then we can look at our sequence 10 because that's the one we are working on and then here is our ip address we have fixed the typo we did in creating the access control entry we had to delete that access control entry by the sequence number and then reinsert it using a sequence number also Okay, we're going to work through one more example here of an extended IP version 4 access control list. What we're going to do here is we're going to allow one PC from the inside of our network, PC1 here, from the inside of our network, we're going to allow it to do normal internet things. So PC1, we're going to allow it to do FTP, SSH, Telnet, DNS, HTTP, and HTTPS. And so FTP actually needs two ports to work with. FTP port 20 for our layer four and 21. So one, one establishes the communications, one actually sends the data. SSH, that uses port 22. Telnet uses port 23. I know Telnet is insecure, but sometimes you just have to use it to connect to a device out there on the internet. We have DNS that uses port 53. HTTP uses port 80. And HTTPS uses port 443. And so what we have to do is allow PC1 to, to send all of those requests out. We have to allow them to send that out, but nothing else. Nothing else can get through from PC1. Then the other thing we have to do is allow re any reply traffic back through our router. We have to allow those established connections back through. And so this reply here, this is established at this time. And so we have to go ahead and create two ACLs because we're gonna apply one to inbound traffic, one to outbound traffic. And once again, this is the filter here that you can see. One side is big, one side is small. 
And so what that is, is the big side takes in lots of information, lots of information, but then we filter it in here. We filter it and only certain information com can come out. And so the big side allows all the traffic to come in, but the little side only allows it out. That's how those, those um, images work. And then we also have to apply it to outbound traffic, the reply statement. So we have to create our two access control lists, and then we have to apply them to the interfaces. We go ahead and create our access control list. We're going to create a named extended access control list. So from global configuration, we start off with access control list extended. And then we're going to call it PERMIT-PC1. Once again, we put it in all caps just to help identify it as we look at all the information. We should start off with a remark statement. That's what we do right here. We're starting off with a remark. And then we're going to permit PC1. And once again, we're permitting a PC. We're not permitting an entire network. We're just permitting one PC to access the Internet. But we're not giving it full access. We're only allowing it to access certain services certain layer four ports on the internet. Then we actually get into our permit statements. We're gonna permit the TCP protocol. And now because we're allowing only one device, one host, we can use the keyword of host and then the IP ad address of that host. That's our source address, where it's from. So this is our source here. And then where are we going? We're going to any spot on the internet. And so this is our destination. And then which layer four protocol are we going to match? And, and we had a list of them. And so we can go in and enter this in numerous times. Down here is this list of protocols we're gonna allow PC1 to do. And that list goes right up here. We're going to allow all of those protocols in or we're going to allow all of those protocols from PC1 to go into R1 to be then routed to the internet. So we enter in all of our permits then, and then at the end we put a deny statement. So any other traffic, and we're going to say from the entire local network, we're going to deny that. So we have a deny based upon IP addresses. And so for our source, we're going to put in here, and once again, this is our source here, and we're going to put in our network address of our local of our local network 192.168.10.0 with a wildcard of 000255 meaning wherever there's a zero in the wildcard that's the one we're going to match and so that's what we're concerned about we're not concerned about that fourth octet so we don't care what device it is on the internal of our network as long as it's part of that 192.168.10 network we're going to deny that and we don't care where it's going anywhere else. And so we're going to put in some quad zeros there and we're going to say, we're going to deny any other traffic. So we allow PC one, 192.168.10.10 to go out on just these layer four protocols and everything else we're going to deny. So that creates our permit PC one extended named ACL. Then we have to create the second one. So we can go ahead and type exit out. We can go in and type in IP access list and we're creating an extended one again and we call it reply dash PC one. Put in a remark saying we're only going to permit returning traffic. And then here's our permit statement. We're gonna permit TCP traffic from anywhere on the internet. And that's where we put the keyword any destined for. And so we're destination or the IP address of PC1 only using our established connection. So any TCP request we've sent out, we're going to allow that reply to come through and nothing else. And that's all we have to do for our second extended named I, or sorry, ACL. So we've created our two extended ACLs. Then we have to apply to the interface. As we look at our diagram right here, we can see that these ACLs are going, going to go here on G000 on R1. We can go ahead and go into that interface. So from global configuration mode, we type in interface G000. And then we go and we apply those interfaces, or sorry, we apply those access control lists. 
To apply them, we type in IP because it's part of the IP suite. Access group. What group of access control entries, what access access control list are we going to do? Be because we use named, one, named ones, we put in the name of it and then which direction. So we're going to do the permit PC1. That is for out that's for traffic coming into our gig 000 interface coming for traffic coming into r1 so we're going to apply it on the in direction and then we apply the second one so ip access group we put the name in here that's the reply dash pc that's the one where we're going to allow only established traffic to come into our device come into our network but once again, we're on R1, so that would be exiting out of R1. So exiting out of G00 interface, going out of R1, so we apply it in the out direction. That sets up our two access control lists on the interface. Permit PC1 for inbound traffic going into R1. Permit, or sorry, reply PC1 is for outbound traffic going out of R1. To verify that we did set up the access controllers correctly and we did apply them in the correct positions, we can do a show IP interface command and then show it for the gig 00 interface. That's the interface we applied it to. And in that information, there are two pieces, there, there's two lines here that are, are of interest here for us for access controllers. One starts with outgoing, one starts with inbound. Here it says our outgoing access list is reply and once again remember this is for traffic from r1 so you're looking from inside of r1 and it's going out of that gig 000 interface that's connected to our internal private network so that reply one that only allows those established connections it goes into or it's going out of r1 onto our internal network then for our inbound network we have the permit and this is permit PC1, where we're just allowing PC1 to go and connect to the common internet things. We can also do a show IP interface and just filter for anything that includes access list down here. And it will give you those two pieces of information. Right here, it'll give you those two pieces of information without all the rest. So here's an example of using filtering. Another way to verify your extended named ACL is to use the command show access list from privilege exec mode. So go ahead and type in show space access dash lists and it'll list out all the access control list you have. First up here is our extended IP access list that is named permit PC1. And then below it'll list out all the access control entries that are associated with it. Here you can see we we have the different protocols and the operating system inserted common names. So when we created here our sequence 20, we didn't put in FTP. What we did is we put in port 21. When we did Telnet, we did not put in Telnet. We put in 23, DNS is 53, web traffic was 80. We put in the numbers over here. You can see that's what we put in is the numbers here, but the system the operating system converted them to common names and so it'll list out all of our access control entries for our access control list it'll have our sequence number so it'll tell you what order it gets processed in once again it starts at the top of the list with the lowest sequence number first if it matches it it does what it says so if it matches this one it'll permit it so if it matches tcp with the host ip address of of 192.168.10.10 going anywhere and using the layer four port number of 20 it's going to match it and then it finished processing if it doesn't match it it goes down to the next sequence and the next sequence all the way through until it processes all those aces and if it didn't match any of them it does that implicit deny and so here's the first access control list we did down here is the second access control list we did our reply PC one. We only have one in there, but we start with 10 permit from anywhere on the internet. So that once again, this is our source. Our destination here is the PC one inside of our network. And we're only doing established connections. 
And for a third way to verify your access control list, what we can do is we can look at our running configuration, how we have our, con our device set up, what our setting settings are in RAM. Go ahead, type in show running dash config. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna filter, I'm gonna filter on the first line that has IP access list, and we're gonna show everything after that. And here's the results. And the first line here it says IP access list, and it's extended, and it says, here's the name of our list. Here's all of our access control entries down to here. Once again, those are all from what we entered in when we created our access control list. Then we have our second access control list right here. Here's our reply one that comes from right here, creating that second list, all of our information. So this is another way to verify that. This is the only way to see the remark statements. Previously, we weren't able to see the remark statements, but in the running config, you can see the remarks. The remarks don't have a sequence number. That's why they weren't listed in the other previous methods. If you want to check your remarks, you have to do a show running config. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on configuring extended IP version for access controllers. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and of course, depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All of my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com. You can get all these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on enterprise networking, security, and automation. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I have just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on enterprise networking, security, and automation. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.